I recently picked up this bull bar for just $150 to replace the aging front bumper on my trusty old Grand Vitara. ARB branded bull bars for this model usually go for up around the $750 to $1000 mark secondhand, but this one was cheap because it was missing all of the underbar covers. I've already made one for the middle of the bar using a bit of cardboard as a template because I needed to quickly get some protection in place for the radiator, but I've been dragging my feet on getting the corner panels done as they are just a much trickier shape. So today, we're going to finish them off. I could probably work these ones out with a cardboard template too, but Creality sent over their new Raptor Pro 3D scanner, so let's give that a go and see what we can come up with. I haven't really done much work with 3D scanners before, so this will be as much a learning experience for me as it is for you guys. This scanner supports two different scan modes, blue line and NIR structured light, meaning it should be suitable for a wide variety of scanning tasks. Structured light mode is useful when you want to capture an object in full color, and it can also function without the need for positioning targets, meaning you don't need to cover your object in sticky dots to get it to work. You do have to move relatively slowly so the camera can track its position, but I found it's also pretty good at picking up where it left off if you did accidentally move too quickly. Structured light mode does have a couple of downsides though. It's generally a bit less accurate than laser scanning, struggles with fine features like rays, text and sharp corners, and most importantly for our use case today, it can struggle with dark or shiny surfaces. This is where the laser mode comes in handy. This scanner uses 22 cross laser lines and seven parallel laser lines and operates in the shorter wavelength blue color, meaning it offers higher resolution and a significant reduction in noise compared to a red laser scanner. This type of scanning is great for finer details and can capture dark and shiny surfaces without the need for surface treatment. We do need to position a bunch of these target dots and it can't capture color, but for this job, that's fine. There's two different sizes of dots supplied, 3mm and 6mm. The 3mm ones are better suited to small objects, whilst the 6mm ones are meant for large jobs like we're doing here. I haven't been able to find any info on how far or close these dots need to be together, just that they need to be placed randomly. So I'm placing them around the front of the bar, as well as up under the front lip of the bar where the cover will mount. I also chucked a few on the mounting bracket as we will need to cut around it so the cover can fit it. With all the dots in place, the next step is to set up the software. First, we need to select blue light mode and choose our resolution. For this job, I probably don't need a super fine resolution and since I'm scanning using my poor old 2017 model laptop, I'm gonna dial it back to 0.5 just to make things easier for it and we'll keep color mapping and disable flat base set to no. Next, we need to set our exposure. There is an automatic mode, but Creality recommends that we set the exposure manually for blue line mode. We can adjust the brightness of the laser as well as the exposure until the dots and the laser lines are roughly exposed equally. Red areas in the image mean they are overexposed, so you'll want to adjust it until those red areas are just disappearing. I did try the automatic mode too, and I had good results with it, but your mileage may vary. Now, we just need to keep the scanner within the 150 to 400 mil scanning range and start scanning. I found moving the scanner slowly over the object whilst watching the screen on the laptop was the best way to go. That way I could see what parts had been covered and where I needed to spend some more time to get enough detail. The blue lines drop out when the scanner loses its position, which I had a couple of times towards the edges of my scanning area. If I were to do this again, I'd probably put a couple more target dots past the edges of where I was intending to scan. All right, with the scanning done, the next step is to convert the scan to a mesh that we can use in CAT. There's a manual option here that allows us to configure how many faces we want and if we want to fill holes and close the mesh. Since I'm new to working with 3D scans, I don't really know what resolution or sensitivity I want, so I just gave the one-click process button a go instead and the results seemed pretty good to me. The processing will take a while, so I was originally planning to save out the raw scan data and move over to my editing PC for this step, but I gave it a go on my laptop and it was really only a couple of minutes, which is better than I was expecting. All right, with the mesh finished processing, it's time to move over to your CAD package of choice. I prefer SOLIDWORKS personally simply because I use it every day at work, but all of this could be done in Fusion and most other 3D CAD packages too. I'll only gloss over the details of how I did it for this video, but let me know if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial in the future. I started out by importing the model into SOLIDWORKS and using the Convert to Mesh Body tool. Then I used the Surface From Mesh tool to select some of the polygons of the scan and convert them into a selectable flat surface that I can start modeling from. I did the bottom edge of the bar where the cover will mount, along with a couple of faces on the bar mount, which I already have modeled up, 
so I can see how it all fits with the existing middle cover that I made. Now that I have some selectable faces, I was able to position the mounts and the cover I made in the model so that I know what I'm working with. I started by drawing the outer edge and then worked my way up using the sheet metal tools and ensuring the angle and length matched my existing middle cover. I was able to cut around the mount pretty neatly. It looks a bit weird, but from the photos I've been able to find of the genuine covers, it's not too dissimilar to what they did, so I'm happy enough with that. With a quick bit of laser cutting and a couple of folds, I've got some covers to test fit. The shape is perfect and the bolt holes even line up pretty well, which I was worried about because they are recessed into the bar and I didn't do a good enough job of the scan to pick them up properly. I did have to make a quick modification to the inner tab of both the covers, but that's my fault because my measurements for where the middle cover was located weren't accurate. I should have scanned a bit further over and included the cover in the scan as everything I designed from the scan fit perfectly. Now that my new covers are sorted, I have one more little problem with this car that I think this scanner can help with. I have this cheap Android Auto head unit installed, which works pretty well, but the wireless support for Android Auto can be a bit flaky, so I often just plug my phone in when I jump in the car to ensure it connects. The problem is, my wife never has any pockets, so her phone ends up dumped in here as well, and as soon as we need to put something else in here like a couple of drinks, I have nowhere safe to put my phone. Android Auto gives me basically all the information that this little display normally would, with the exception of the fuel economy display, which is useless anyway, as it basically goes from bad to worse in this car. So let's scan this little nook in and turn it into a shelf to mount my phone. I'm gonna use blue line mode again, so I'll position a bunch of the little three millimeter marker dots around the area to be scanned and a couple further out, so I can easily scan right up to the edges without losing position. I'm going to use 0.2 for a resolution this time since we aren't scanning such a large area and again I will keep colour mapping and disable flat base set to no. Getting a complete scan of up under the top lip section proved to be pretty challenging but I really only need the shape of the cutout and the curved base to do what I need. I used the one click processing option which again gave me great results and I brought the model over to SolidWorks so we can get stuck into the design. The setup process was pretty much the same as it was the first time, but since this will be a printed part, the CAD side of things was a bit different. SolidWorks probably isn't the right tool for this job since its mesh modelling tools are severely lacking, but I was able to manually design a shape that will fit into the area I need just by watching for overlapping areas between my model and the scan. Using a combination of the chamfer, radius and draft tools, I was able to come up with a shape that fits the scan pretty well. Then I added a lip and some tabs that should keep my phone in place nicely and then I printed the whole thing in black PETG. The fitment in the car is terrific and it should do a great job of keeping my phone safely in place. A big strip of double sided tape will keep it in place nicely and hopefully the PETG has a high enough softening point that it will be able to withstand the crazy hot days we get here in the middle of summer. It's winter right now though so I guess only time will tell. If you're interested in one of these scanners, make sure you check out the link in the video description for more information and let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see me try the scanner on. I've already got a couple of ideas for some cool projects in mind that I might be able to use it for, but you guys always have some great ideas too, so I'd love to hear them. Thank you Creality for sending over the scanner and thank you guys for watching.